This is a historical tape back in 1999 showing posterior assisted levitation. We knew that the zonules were weak here after capsulorexis, which we've edited out, so we've decided to put in a capsular tension ring before starting phaco emulsification. which is a little difficult because one can't see the edge of the capsular rexus when the cortex is disturbed like this. But one has to be aggressive to make sure one is in cortex to start and then it should follow to become entirely within the capsular bag. Here we're attempting to finish the entry with the Sinsky hook, but it's not working real well. Now I would have another Sinsky hook to to reach over and pull the that rounded edge of the ring to get it into the bag. But at that time I didn't use that technique. Maybe I didn't have two Sinsky hooks, I don't remember. So we now lost it with the hook and we're going to use a forceps to try to complete the entry of the capsular tension ring into the capsular bag. just to be sure that it stays within the bag because sometimes you can release that and it'll come out of the bag if it's not far enough into the bag. Now as we go in and turn irrigation on we can see that the whole bag intraocular lens subluxates. So now what do we do? So not going to try to proceed with fake emulsification. We decided that we're going to have to be getting that whole lens out of there because it's just not stable enough. I guess with the Sioni ring now one could have started with that, but this was back in 1999. I'm not sure availability then, but I've decided to convert to extra capsular technique. So I have to make a really big incision because I have the endocapsular tension ring in there and I can't just strip off cortex. So we're going to make an almost 180 degree incision here and then reposition to operate through that incision. When it's nice to have very sharp diamond knives, you have to watch your incision to make sure you're not uh, getting too shallow, that it's staying long enough at each point of the cut. We're putting some pre-placed sutures because the soft eye is more vulnerable to choroidal effusion, choroidal hemorrhage, so we want to be able to close quickly. I'm adding some anesthetic subconjunctivally because this was started as a, a topical case, which in retrospect might not have been a good idea. Now we're going to do 
a sclerotomy for posterior assisted levitation. You can see we're entering at an angle starting at about four millimeters but probably entering through the sclera at about three or two and a half and then with a cannula or a spatula and Dr. Chang is with his visco can cannulation, cannulation or levitation has promoted using the dispersive viscoelastic at this for this uh, instrument and one has to just position that watching the elevation to make sure you're central and far enough to be able to get the force to lift the entire lens rather than tipping it. You want to get it up through the pupil with our posterior assisted levitation. So we don't want to rush this technique because you have to sort of maneuver your cannula to have the force in the right place to bring up the entire lens through the pupil. One can add more viscoelastic underneath to protect the vitreous again. And you can add viscoelastic to protect the cornea as well. So I'm staying behind with my cannula holding the lens up there. I think we're maneuvering it around to where we can get a hold of the endocapsular tension ring to remove the bag and cataract by grasping the ring. So the lens and the most of the capsule, some of the cortex has been stripped, but we are <coughs> Relieved that we've gotten the, the nuclear material out. Maybe vitreous following. Certainly vitrectomy will be required, but we're going to temporarily close the incision. These may have to be adjusted or replaced later. Back then I didn't have two-port vitrector, so we're using coaxial vitrector. Pupil is drawn a little bit to the wound, that's not an iridotomy. There's a little damage to the sphincter. But I think we're able to get all of the cortical material as well as anterior vitreous. And then myocol to constrict the pupil and place an anterior chamber intraocular lens. When I have this big an incision, I like to rotate these lenses after placement so that they're 90 degrees away from the incision because it's hard to visualize through the edematous uh, posterior cornea proper lens placement. So you can see this edited down, but now I've rotated the lens 
90 degrees away from placement. Oh, it looks like that was a sector iridectomy that I've resutured. You can see the suture there near the sphincter. So that was done so that the there wouldn't be any impediment from the sphincter to get that whole big lens with endocapsular tension ring through the pupil. This figure of eight suture with uh, a number of figure eight makes for easy adjustment 